Now we're going to set up an Android project with Espresso 2.0. Espresso is a Google testing tool for Android and it makes it easy for us to test Android applications by clicking on views and checking certain properties of these views to make sure that our application is doing what we expect. This is the website here for uh, Android Test Kit, also known as Espresso. And this is our application here, which is a simple application that I just generated from the file new project wizard inside of Android Studio. This application is currently running inside of the Jenny Motion emulator, and it has a simple navigation drawer and just an empty view right now. So this is a very simple application, but we're going to go ahead and set, get it set up and running with Espresso 2.0. Let's do that now. In order to get set up with Espresso, what we need to do first is open the build.gradle file. So I'm going to double click on the build.gradle file. And now that we have the build.gradle file, we're going to need to add a couple of dependencies. And these are going to be the Espresso dependencies. Let's add those now. So I'm going to paste them right here below. You'll notice that we are using, instead of the compile dependency, these are Android test compiled. So this is going to show up inside the, these are going to be run anytime we run Android tests. Now inside of your SRC folder, you're going to notice that we have an Android test folder inside of there. And this is where we're going to create our tests. So let's go ahead and create a brand new test inside of here. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk a little bit about these two dependencies. The first one here is the Espresso Core. This is the actual core dependency for Espresso. And this is also the testing support that we have for Espresso. So we'll need both of these to perform testing. One note about Espresso uh, and the core dependencies. Espresso currently contains Dagger. Dagger is a dependency injection tool for Android written by the guys over at Square. Now, sometimes you may run into a problem if you're using Dagger inside of your application already, and you may run into an issue about a class not found exception. I cover this on my blog right here. In short, when you run the test, you'll see that the test is started and the test running has failed because it cannot find a class. And that class uh, kind of sends you down the wrong path. And after some time of digging into the source, I found out that it was due to Dagger. All we have to do is add this exclusion to the Android test compile dependency for the Espresso Core 2.0 dependency to exclude Java inject, the Java X inject. And usually that will solve the problem if you're using Dagger and running into this class not found exception. Back at the project now, let's go ahead and create a new file. So I'm going to create a new file inside of the Android test Java inside of my package. And then I'm going to go ahead and create it. And I'm just going to call it main activity test, because we're going to be testing the main activity. You'll notice up top that we need to do a Gradle sync, because we did change the build.gradle file. We did add those de dependencies, so let's go ahead and sync that now. And you'll see down at the bottom it's syncing, and it's going to complete here in a second. The main activity test, we can actually extend uh, test instrumentation, test case 2, provide the activity name. However, I find this really clunky, uh, and it just doesn't feel right. I don't like the naming structure of the activity. Uh, and thankfully, Jake Wharton has created a JUnit rule that allows us uh, to simply specify the activity we're going to test. It will create the activity at runtime for us so we can test properly and not have to extend uh, the test case that is built in for uh, Espresso. It makes it a lot easier. Let's take a look at that activity rule now. Jake has posted the activity rule on gist.github.com slash Jake Wharton uh, with this ID here. You can just go to his is gist locations and you should find activity rule.java and as you can see inside of the notes here it launches an activity when your test starts so you have to start you don't have to extend activity instrumentation test activity instrumentation test case 2 anymore this makes it a lot easier and in my opinion makes it a lot cleaner let's go ahead and use this file so what I'm going to do is just click the raw button here I'm going to copy the contents go back to the application create a new file I'm going to call it activity rule Enter. I'm going to control. I'm actually just going to copy paste over all this. We're going to get some errors here because by default it's going to try to use Jake's package name. So I will just remove his package name and ours is still at the top. Clean it up a little bit and now we're ready to roll. So to use the test case, we have the, excuse me, the activity rule. We have to include it at the top of our activity, main activity test. Let's do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new line here paste in some code, alt enter to include the dependency. 
And we can see here that we're including the activity role. Notice that I'm not providing the generic type here. We're using Java 7, so I don't have to provide the generic type. I do need to provide a test runner though. So I'm gonna say run with, say Android JUnit 4.class. This is the test runner I want to use. Now we can actually write a test. So this is just a very simple test. It actually provides probably very little to no value other than to validate the fact that our, our testing is set up correctly and that we get a green light. What you're going to notice here shortly is I'm going to perform what most of you will know as TDD, Test Driven Development. I don't have the actual uh, feature written yet, which may be just some text on the screen. I'm going to test for it. The test is going to fail. Then we're going to go write the implementation, and then we're going to test again, and we'll get the green. So again, the red-green refactor, uh, as you've seen in many other languages here. So now that we have this, we're going to want to go ahead and start setting up uh, our various different espresso calls. And so what we can do is we're going to call... Uh, a bunch of different things here. We need to call, depending on what view we want, if we're going to be looking at data, uh, what are we going to match on, and then what do we expect to happen after we've created a match? So after we've found the view, uh, after we've looked at the text, what do we expect the text to look like? And that's going to be the example we have here. Now there's a lot of different uh, view matchers and there's a lot of different assertions we can use. And initially when I started out, it was hard to figure out. And so I found a, a nice cheat sheet on the Espresso site. Let's take a look at that now. This is the Espresso 2.0 cheat sheet, and it really helps solidify a few things here for you. Uh, that was a quick reference here so you can see what exactly is going on. And so as you can see, this is the common pattern you're gonna use when you're testing with Espresso 2.0. You're gonna specify a view, say on this view, and then you need to perform, uh, you need to provide a matcher of some sort. So something uh, that matches the particular view that you're looking for. Maybe it has, uh, as we can see here, user properties. Maybe it's gonna be with an ID. So it's say on view with ID. Maybe you're looking for a, a view with a particular piece of text. So on view with text, and maybe it's hello world, or uh, on view with tag value. Maybe you provided a tag to that actual view. There's a bunch of different one, ones here, such as the hints, the links, ellipsized text, and so forth. You can even see UI properties uh, and so forth. There's a bunch of them you can inspect. This is a great tool, a great cheat sheet to look at when you're wondering how to write the Espresso test. Now, once you've created a matcher, you have the view, you need to perform some view action. So what you can do is you can <clears throat> click, double click, so as you can see here on view, and we've looked for a piece of text that has hello world and we found it. We wanna perform a particular action. Maybe you wanna to press back, open a link, long click. We wanna clear the text out if it's an edit text or type some text in if we want to. Uh, then at that point, we can perform some type of assertion on that view that we have now performed the action on. And this is going to be the view assertions. And so we can see that it matches a particular matcher. So again, it matches a matcher of one of these over here. Uh, it doesn't exist. Uh, maybe there's no ellipsized text. It's to the left of, above, below, etc. So you can mix and match all these different types of things. And you'll notice that the view assertions also reach back into the matchers as well. So you can kind of dig deeper and deeper uh, in your calls. Everything is nice and chained together as you'll see here in a moment. Let's go back to the code and we'll write our first test. Okay, now we're going to write our first test. What we'll say is on view, you'll notice here that it turns red. I hit alt enter and I'm going to do a static import of the on view method, on view. And I'll say with text, so I'm going to look for a particular piece of text. I'm going to do a static import again for a view matcher. Again, this is the view matcher component. And I'm going to provide some text here. And what I might say is, hello. We're going to look for some uh, a view that has the text of hello. And now we're going to perform the assertion. Say check. I'm going to say view assertions. That matches. And I'm going to say is displayed. And this is a very simple test. Again, this isn't really doing anything to help us really validate any functional UI components of our our application, but what this does demonstrate is that we're actually able to get the test infrastructure up and running, that we're able to actually see this view that has the text hello, and just make sure that it's actually displayed on the screen. So it provides a top to bottom uh, you know, test case to make sure that Espresso is working. So now what we can do is we'll need to do, uh, we'll need to run it. So to run it, we're going to go and do the edit configurations, and this time I'm going to hit the plus sign and we're going to do Android tests. Uh, I'm going to rename this just as, uh, if we're going to say it, caster tests. Uh, the module, we'll select at module. Now inside of here, what we need to do is provide the actual test runner. So we're going to say android.test. 
support.test and, and then we're going to say runner and then Android J unit runner and we'll hit OK. Uh, we could use emu actually before we hit OK, uh, you, we'll probably want to choose our target device. I prefer to use show chooser with dialog uh, because a lot of times I have different devices running and I will have a physical device plugged in, multiple emulators running uh, through Jenny Motion, and I want to be able to determine where the test should run. So I'll leave this enabled. This again is up to you. If you decide that you always want one particular USB device, that's up to you. Choose whichever one works best for your scenario. Click OK. Now we can go up to the run menu and say run caster test. We're going to see it uh, Gradle build here. I'm going to open up this window here to see if our application starts. And we're going to see something happen back inside of the IDE. It looks like we have a duplicate license.txt file. So what we need to do, uh, looks like we are nice enough to be have the exactly what we should be including inside of our build.gradle file. Let's go to build.gradle and add this exclusion inside of the Android uh, block here. We'll say packaging options, this, and then we can just say exclude license.txt. And this is because we have multiple license files that have been included through the Hamcrest module. And this will just go ahead and exclude that so we don't get that build error again. Let's hit run caster tests. We'll see that it builds. We'll leave this open. All right, great, we have our Device chooser will want to run on the Jenny Motion device and enter. It's going to instantiate the test. And now we get a very common error. This says test running failed, unable to find instrumentation info for the name of our component in our test, etc. So it can't find any instrumentation info. It can't find any tests. Um, so what we need to do is include that actually inside of our build.gradle file. Where we need to include this is inside the default config. So we're going to create a new line here and we'll actually paste this in here. And this is the test instrumentation runner Android support. The same thing that we had typed inside of our uh, run configuration. I'm going to go ahead and hit sync now because we want the project to be synced with the build.gradle file. Okay, great. It looks like it's done. Now we hit run again. Let's rerun those caster tests. We get the device chooser. Hit OK. I'm going to pull up the emulator again. Now it looks like we have two passed and one failed. Now we had a actually a test that was default inside of an application when we first built an application. This is just a test case inside of here. Uh, and it says that a test case set up properly and test case set up properly is, is working as we expect it to. Uh, but our espresso test is failing. Now we're actually getting tests. We're getting com uh, component infos, etc. One specific note, if you do forget to set the test runner on your Android tests, Android Studio will not be able to find any of your tests at all. So you need to set this specific instrumentation runner inside of your edit run configuration for your tests. So let's hop back over to the main activity test. Let's take a look at the run window again. Okay, our run window is open. We can select the test that we created should be able to launch main screen. Let's drag this up so we can see it. Now we have a bunch of information that's visible to us so we can actually determine what needs to happen. So what we see here is no view matching exception. No views in the hierarchy were found with the text hello. So that means that we were not able to find any text in the application that said hello. And that would make sense because we don't have anything in there that says hello. So let's just go back to the main activity here. I'm just going to look for the content. I'm just going to hop inside this fragment here. I'm going to just copy this, create another one right below it. And we can see it over here in the preview as well. All right, so let's go back to our test now. Now we're going to rerun our test again. It's going to build. The dialog chooser is going to show up. We'll select OK. We'll open up the window again. And you'll see now that we've actually passed. So the application started. The test APK and the regular APK were built together. They were both installed at the same time. The application started, and then the test APK was able to determine that it did find a text object with the word hello on it. It checked to make sure that it matched, and it checked to make sure that it is displayed. So now we've actually got Expresso 2.0 up and running, installed inside of our application, and now we can start performing real end-to-end -end functional tests with Espresso. Until next time.